conversation we had like what nine nine months ago do you remember it yeah man <laughs> i mean it's been a roller coaster are you nervous yeah of course a little bit you're always going to be nervous with a big change right i mean we've had three years of a lot of success with ferrari and now we're going to something completely different. I, I can't lie and say I'm not nervous, but I'm also excited. You know, it's a, it's a completely new challenge for me and everyone, and I think it'll help us grow as drivers. So, yeah, it's, it's mixed emotions. I think more excited than nervous, but of course there's a little bit of you, because you kind of make yourself a bit vulnerable. Yeah. You know, you're, you're starting again and uh, in such a competitive championship where we're coming off the back of a, a championship win. So. You know, I think the eyes are on us anyway for next year. Here we are in the UK in Mercedes World and we're launching our 2022 Challenger. This is the grandest way we've opened the season so far. Well, it's like we concluded the first chapter in the story of Tempesta Racing. We started in 2019 in the Blancpain GT Championship. A right time to change and look for a new challenge and look beyond just the next year. Our thinking is to look for the next four to five years and with the target of entering Le Mans. So, it was all about looking for a partner that sees value in what we're doing. It's a big change this year. Performance is not down to just the drivers, it was a lot down to uh, the team working together. And um, that's going to be a challenge this first year to make sure that we are as competitive as we were before. Of course, a big part in that was Eddie having the confidence and the faith to come with us, um, continue his journey with Sky Tempesta Racing. Let's say Ferrari is a family for me and uh, to go somewhere that I'm new and uh, it was intimidating. Obviously I don't only race for Ferrari, I, I worked for Ferrari as a driver coach and that was a big problem for me at the beginning because I did not know how they would react to it. Obviously Mercedes is a winning car, they won so many races so I'm actually excited to try something different. It's just uh, my, at the moment my career was, could go uh, much better or it could go much worse. So it was very clear that both Chris and I felt Eddie was a completely integral part of the team and part of the future of the team. So, you know, we're all massively grateful and, and respect the decision that he's made there and we want to make sure the team and ourselves as drivers perform as competitively as possible to give ourselves the opportunity to win championships, win this championship and uh, continue building on our success and make his change worthwhile bringing the whole team, let's say all three drivers I knew, Chris and John, uh, Luca as a driver coach, physiotherapist, Hannah, so it's basically the same team, just it's an, another car, so the core of the team did not change, so that didn't worry too much about it. Me and Chris talk about like how good the dynamic of our team is and why it kind of works, and I will always say I genuinely think good people attract good people, and everyone is amazing at their job. The people are the ones that's gonna make a difference. And we also already have a very good established uh, relationship with our new technical partner. So in that respect, although there is a big change, we do feel confident that transition will be quite smooth. I love uh, everything about this team. For me, it's really a family. Everyone we work with, I think we're very close with. The drivers, we have a great relationship. All of the support crew, we have a great relationship with. And our partners as well, you know. Uh, Sky is massively important in this journey. Uh, you know, that's been critical to building the team. And, and really what I enjoy a lot about it is not just the racing and the motorsport, but it's actually what we do outside of the car as well. Raising awareness for the sport, um, including P1 
people in our race weekends, inviting people to have experiences like we've done today to experience our new car. For me, that's also a very important and enjoyable aspect of looking after the team. We're not going to start the season thinking we're going to destroy everybody because everything is new. You always have the feeling, can you still do it? And how will I adapt to this new car, this new environment? So. I'm really excited. For me, this change of car has just brought a new, even more determination than I've had before. We start at Imola. It's a fantastic old school circuit. GT World Challenge is a fantastic series of races. So there are some three hour races, six hour race in Paul Ricard, and the 24 hours of Spa, which is the ultimate GT race. And that's the one that everybody wants to win. Those five races make up a championship. So it's not just about doing well in the individual race, it's about scoring points over the course of the season and trying to win the championship in the category that you're racing. In GT World Challenge, almost everybody is welcome. So you have the overall competition, which really is dominated by the pro drivers. Many of those are factory drivers, but if you only had pro drivers and pro teams on the grid, it would be a relatively small grid. So then there are other competitions within it. So you have the Silver Cup. The FIA, the governing body of the sport, has a driver grading system. And the Silvers are those that perhaps haven't had as yet the greatest success, but are young talents. But then you've also got a pro-am competition. The am is your gentleman racer, a guy that drives his desk during the week and a race car at the weekend. But in order for him to have a chance in a race like this, he needs a pro. So pro-am is exactly that. And then there's the am cup, exactly what it says on the tin. The Sky Tempesta racing team now moves in to the gold cup. So what you have effectively is a minimum of a bronze, a silver and either a gold or platinum graded driver. All of those categories, all of those classes score points for their finishing position within the class. It's going to be a fascinating season this for Sky Tempesta Racing because on the one hand you've got the three musketeers all back together again. Chris Froggart, Jonathan Hui, Eddie Cheever have proved that they work really well as a team. They've had good success in endurance and in sprint races but this year they've got a new car. It's the Mercedes AMG GT3, which is a fabulous GT car. It's a really brave move to change cars, to go away from something, if you like, tried and trusted. Is it going to work? We'll find out. Before you get to the race, the weekend is divided up into a number of different sessions. You start with what's called the bronze test, and that's for the bronze graded drivers. Very good job, keep going, four laps to go, four laps to go. So my name is David, um, I'm the chief engineer of the Sky Tempesta team. And yeah, basically my role is uh, to keep the team like all together, organize all the performance things in the team and lead the drivers and the team through the weekend. Good start. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna box him? Yep. Your feedback regarding the drive. You're gonna see that it, now that he stopped and he th rethink about what he've done, what he has to improve, you're gonna improve. <laughs> My name is Luca Persiani. I'm uh, the driver performance coach of Sky Tempesta Racing. The most difficult part is to try to channel their focus, their attention on actually driving in the moment. So, and when it comes to frustration, so when it comes to not achieving the result that they were aiming to, they take, you know, they stay, they go away from that focus and then therefore they're not driving at their best potential. So it's, that is the most challenging part for me. And, uh, and last but not least, keeping their confidence high between, of course, they, the car and themselves, but also with the team. Do you want to, do you want to try even uh, less wing for now, uh, for new tire on, just new tire? Mm. Mm. 
I'm not going to ask too much for him. No, I wouldn't. I have to check even if this is already too low. But he's consistent now. He's still, he's complaining about always here, but he's going, yeah, but this is very he's very good this is very good. for used tires. So I was really trying to help David uh, understand how John, his procedure on uh, how to get better. And uh, I wanted to make some changes uh, with the car, uh, just because I know how John approaches a weekend and uh, the way he builds up to the weekend. Obviously, I know John uh, since a long time. We've been, uh, winning and competing together in many races and many years. John, excellent job on this run. We are position 3 overall, fastest in class, fastest Mercedes. Very good improvement on the, on the fresh tires. I think you found a lot of in yourself. Bravo! <laughs> oh no, it was very good. But even uh, it was very good uh, on the first set, better, 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 like 2-4. Very, very impressive. Oh, we have a good car, right? Good team, good car. Just have to do the job. Free practice is exactly that. It doesn't affect the starting grid. It gives you a chance to learn the circuit, learn the car, practice pit stops, practice driver changes, maybe scrubbing tires, maybe bedding brakes, maybe go for a, a fast lap and see what the car is capable of. Now, the idea of pre-qualifying is twofold. It acts as a second free practice session. But because it's got the word qualifying in the title, if qualifying could not take place, you would go off that order to form the grid. The box at the end of this lap, box at the end of this lap. It's okay, driving. Balance. Yes, as soon as they go over 185, they start pushing like uh, the day before. Yeah. So they should always stay. Yeah. yeah. It's in the window. If they're too low, it slides everywhere. And then in the second something is very good. Then if you push hard, it starts going on. But the car is fine. The brakes, I think, a little bit of a lot of blocking on the brakes today. I don't know if the track is uh, it's very fast, but it's a little bit of... I saw more locking than yesterday. Okay, we have a look at the data. Tire pressures can make a night and day difference uh, because there's a very small window of um, where the tire uh, performance uh, gives it its best. It's gonna rain. It is gonna rain. You know, changing conditions are. It is very likely. But what are we gonna do? He didn't drive yet. Yeah. That means, but then you know what? It's a new tire. He had two new tires yesterday. Yeah, no, I mean, not him driving now. Were well, you driving? Yeah. But it's only because we want to be here. It's only because we want to be here. No, but we see if, 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 if it's managed. I think, I think so. It should be the case. But if we don't use it, it's going to rain later. That's good, traction is good, but I would like more, even more, more. Yeah, more, more, more is not always possible, because if, you, if I give you more, I have to take it somewhere away. Either you go again with new tires, or I would let the others drive. Okay. Then you go new. Good job, you're overall P5. 
10, P10 overall. Uh, even if you didn't get it together, just, just box, box. It's all right. It's okay. Uh, we have to look even now. I don't know if in Aqua Minerali, what really upsets Chris in the car now. Hmm? Chris is in the car. Yeah. Tonight we're going to look me and you and see if it's my driving style or if we have still on the Because that really, trust me, David, that really limits to go fast. Really I, I believe you. No, no, no. I want you. I, I, I don't get offended if you say what the fuck are you saying. It's look. It's the way you take off the brakes. Or it's, but the car would fly if it had less. Yeah. I tried ABS nine because Marcello told me I did not like it. I went back to it. I didn't. Okay. When you get it together, we did a forty point four or something. Yeah, yeah, no, so no, it's so. No, I am. It's okay. No, no, no. I, but I, I know that I driving also I want you to not be driving style if I'm doing something. Yeah. It is very important um, that we kind of have to trust each other. They have to trust me that my decisions hopefully are, are correct and out of my experience knowing the Mercedes really well. But I also need to trust them on the feedback and then since you start working together and getting this experience together and this journey, you, you, you basically know when somebody is saying something, how do you have to take it? It's nothing that you don't trust them. It's just you, if somebody likes to, yeah, just to overdo it a little bit. So then it's up to me to say, okay, maybe it's always like this. So we dial it back a little bit and it will be okay. Or somebody is just honest and like very true. So I know, okay, if he says like this, it says like this, then, uh, then it is what it is. I don't want to say anything to be honest. I don't really. I'm not driving well today. I can't drive like this. My seat has no support. They took everything out from the side. Now I move like a like, like a ballerina. No, the big pedal is. You don't have the your. You have you never done it. No. Oh, okay. Maybe. Because we don't have the knockoff spring, the brake pedal is changes every single corner. I can't brake into Aqua Minerale, and then half the time I brake, then I have to pump it halfway. I can't, I, I can't drive the car like this. Or something. Yeah, yeah, then the rest will come. I miss everything. Yeah, I know. No, I can do it, Luca. I can do it better. No, yes, no, no, no buddy. The shit car. It's just but nice. that is an easy fix because they just need to. They already told us what is, you know, the pro and cons. The cons now are know, bigger than the pro. If, uh, Pads already. We shouldn't start the most important day with old pads. Yeah. For me, the car is capable of doing a 144.4, which brings us top 10, top 6, 7. Yeah? I mean, this is what it is. Yeah. And then we have to focus and we bring it together for tomorrow morning. Yeah. There's nothing more for me, at least, I want to do, and I give, I can give nobody quality driving time on fresh tires because I don't have one. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's not having because right before quality, you will have the best feeling as possible. So definitely, Eddie is good to go like this. Yeah. I mean, you're still complaining, but he's always complaining. Yeah. No. No. It's. Uh... This is how it works with him. No, not always. No, I just need to know. No, I mean, yeah, I'm telling asking. you, no, not always. It's just because he feels there is a limiting factor for him now, the understeer, and he's just, uh, you know, he's yeah, just, just saying it. That we need to understand it comes from both sides. They need, they come from Ferrari, and now we're in the Mercedes team. No, no, for sure, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I don't want to give him front, no. but if I could, as I said, I would be the king. The car has a limiting factor, and it's always the front axle. Yeah. And then there needs to be the right things to do, but this we cannot figure out in two or three stints. Yeah. This is work we need to do fine tuning. This is details we are talking now. 
Eddie, I mean, he's, I mean, all the drivers are very competitive. Uh, otherwise, they would be wrong in the sports what they're doing and probably not in the position Eddie was when he were, uh, was at Ferrari. So he's really eager to bring the team forward. Um, I mean, it's something the driver has to bring with him. Otherwise, we'll never make it to pole position or to winning races. Um, you have to be a little bit egoistic as a driver as well. But I think he's not egoistic towards his teammates. So I think it's more about the team in this, uh, yeah, this whole Sky Tempesta uh, project. Um, and in the beginning, for him, with making the step towards, uh, from Ferrari towards Mercedes, he struggles to get to know the Mercedes but as well struggle Chris a little bit and uh, Jonathan because this is natural and um, yeah the goal is now to bring them up to speed as quick as we can in testing and other things so they uh, the experience they had with the Ferrari they need to have now with the Mercedes. You're missing the three tenths to angle if you want to compare yourself to one corner, three corners. Yeah. <laughs> ah, on the map is actually four corners. And sector, sector two? I think uh, your quickest, one turns in purple. Not even. Yep. Not anyway. even. Seven I numbers. can show you then so here. Worry, everything is okay. <laughs> of course, it's, it's easy to get there. And on the other side, uh, this is that. And Chris did not use yeah. in time. So, of course, That's I. That's why I said. For this time, I want to stay out of it. You discuss. Yeah. I said, no, okay, I clearly, because when he says he thinks he can do 47, which he did, and it's even better. Yeah. Of course, we made the car even a bit here and there. Yeah. But then, in the future, we should focus more on Chris. But this is happening only this, this weekend, because it's his first That's weekend said, with the Mercedes. I will so stay out of this group because in the I, balance, I need to grow in. Yeah, but yeah, then in yeah. the future... No, 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 it's not going to happen again, I'm, I promise you. We need to focus. But but from end, it's is, not going to happen again. If we have three days or two days of proper testing with a good amount of tires, yes. we won't have this problem again because now we're doing a driving school. This is what we do yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah? No, it's not no, that no, we optimize bits and pieces, we're doing driving school with them. It's, it's important, yeah, at the, you know, just feel the car the best yeah. and, uh, and Chris will, will, will be quick, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah, I think just now a little bit. Just, from the three of them, I think he just needs the longest to adapt to the car. Who? Chris. 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 You, you will be surprised. No, but it, it's obvious already. He, he, he will be surprised. He will come yeah, and probably come be very soon. strong. But very soon. For the moment, he needs the longest to adapt. Yeah. This is what I think, yeah. without knowing them. They're just, they need Sunday and they're gonna come back. You will see, you will yeah, see. It's, it's the first weekend with a new, uh, with a new brand. And also for Eddie, it's the first time he changes brand. Eh? First time in his career. So it's, uh, it's a new thing for everyone. So don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> My position is good because sometimes they use me to channel or, or to interpret what the drivers are feeling. So I'm kind of in the middle and, uh, and since I'm out, I, I can look them from outside. It's easier for me to manage the emotion sometime and just to manage the communication, which is the most important part uh, in this moment. It's the first time that we change a, a car in these years, so it's like, are we gonna be competitive? No, are we gonna be going? So this kind of... Uh... It's the beginning time is always a little bit... Yeah, yeah, we should. But we're gonna, we're gonna make it, we're gonna talk to them. But uh, I've, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be competitive. Not pretty sure, I'm super convinced. But overall, Eddie, did you like the car? Don't put more responsibility on yourself. I mean, because I want to have the responsibility. If the car is horrible, it's my fault. We need to drive more. No, 
I think I think it wasn't actually. It was a good session. I think uh, overall, probably we're hard hard on ourselves for, for such a the first, time in, first the time in this car. But obviously, the competition is that high, and we're used to uh, being extremely competitive. That we don't really want to be. Um, we don't want to be any less, you know, than we were last year. So we're all trying to learn very quickly. There's a lot of work to do, not just from driving. You know, things like the pit stop, the way that everyone works together at the moment is not. Um, it's not that sort of well-oiled machine that we've had in the past. With, but it with never would have been successful. No, of course not. But you know, I think I think in a way, my understanding or reflection is actually. Our side, me, John, Eddie, Luca, we've actually, we're the pillar that has actually worked together the most. Even though all of these guys, I think, are extremely experienced and very, very good at their jobs, I don't think they're all used to working with each other yet. You know, so I think we've got a bunch of, let's say, a bunch of top staff, but they've all worked with this car, but not together. So, so they're not us, like, they don't have yet the same relationship that we have together yet and we don't understand them yet they don't understand us yet so there needs to be this growing together and molding together but in a way i think sometimes the grid is set through the qualifying session itself and that grid is where the cars will start for the race every driver goes out and does a time Drivers are nominated, driver one, driver two, or driver three. And driver one goes out in Q1, driver two in Q2, and guess what? Driver three in Q3. But what you do over the course of those three sessions is take the average of those three combined times. So it's not just about being fast, it's then trying to get as evenly matched a combination of drivers as you can. So you could be fourth in a session, but you could still be on pole position because the average works out that little bit better. It gets away from a really quick driver setting the pole position time and letting his slower co-driver start and maybe first corner accidents happening because his pace isn't as good as those around. So actually, it makes for a fascinating qualifying. It also makes for a safer start. You could argue that the grid is all rather irrelevant for three, six or 24 hours of racing once they get going but it does bring more drama and more interest to qualifying to see who comes out on top on that average. And stay until four, so we can land and have a nice exit from turn one. Like, you land, change of direction in a Varante Alta and good exit, and that's it, then the rest was good, okay? We decided to, uh, like the role of the drivers was uh, Jonathan, Chris and then last Eddie. Um, I think it was not too bad to be honest, but uh, unfortunately the driver I was the most confident with, uh, Jonathan, who was uh, very good in the Bronx test uh, earlier on the weekend, he didn't have his best morning. Nah, he said that he was not happy with the tires. The tires didn't come in like he wants it. And because you always have to slow down again, so he didn't get it. Every time they're coming towards pressure, he slows down and then it falls back down. It's still cold. Because the car will overtake him. Why was he going down? No, he needs to slow down to get a lap pressure. And then the tire is dropping. I mean, I help Chris now to put more air into the tire. He has a better feeling because I think only Eddie is the one that wants low, low pressures. And the others need higher pressures to get confidence. Even it might be not quicker, but they need that confidence because they don't like that movement. 
Was it the balance or what was the problem? No, there's no grip in the front. I couldn't turn on the front tires at all. Okay. Even let's say even two, three, four down complex. Even until the end. In the bronze test, there are a lot less cars on the track, and then you have a lot more time to let's say warm up the tires, get them to the right window, and. As we saw in qualifying, everything fell apart. And uh, one of the reasons was the lack of knowledge in terms of the setting the correct tire pressures, especially that weekend being ex extremely cold, the track temperatures. And uh, we paid a heavy price because I spent four or five laps not able to get the tires into the correct operating, operating window. And then thereafter, there was a red flag when I was finally able to do one decent lap and uh, that didn't count. So in the end, we sort of finished right at the bottom. So that tells you that uh, bronze test, okay, it means something is a positive step, but in the end, when it counts, that's what, when it really matters. And I think from the three drivers, his potential was a lot higher than what he actually was capable of showing uh, this morning. And then for the others, they were roughly where I expected it. Also, Eddie, he, he said on Friday already or on Saturday, when yeah, when I have a new tire, an empty tank, then I'm possibly doing this kind of lap time. And then within two, three tenths, he was where he sat. So this is another thing uh, where, or the first part where I see, okay, this is how you can trust your driver when he's saying he's capable of this. <laughs> Red flag, stop, time to stop. Come back to the box, back to the box. It was 20 seconds missing to finish this lap. If it was easy, we didn't like it, right? <laughs> uh, these quali are like very tricky with this temperature. Everything is going to be easier now. <laughs> I am, I am always always. always. This weekend, the fans are back. We're expecting the crowds in big numbers. And they won't just be watching fantastic GT cars and the best GT drivers in the world, they'll also be watching Valentino Rossi. The radio check, radio check. Maybe check if it shows the official track map to the page agent that will be showing the Copy that you tell me turn 16. Again, we were encountering some relatively difficult uh, situations, again with tire warm up. Uh, in fact, I even had a spin on the formation lap, which was quite uh, embarrassing and almost uh, cost us the race if I didn't save it, luckily, just out of the gravel. This is where the lack of experience, lack of testing, you have to pay a heavy price. If you are not in formation, you can go back to your position. If it's already information, you have to stay where you are. I'll go back because it's past the end of sector two. 
Haas and the sector 2, you have to start at the back. You have to start at the back. You have to start at the back. Green, green, green. John, radio check, radio check, are you all okay? So we lost uh, we lost few position, but uh, he's now running P7, so he's, uh, you know, long, long, he's still long, still long. Are you okay? First time ever he had a contact overtaking someone. Really? Yeah, first time. It's a three hour race to start off the championship. There's a six, there's a 24 and the regulations are slightly different in terms of the driving time over the course of those races. But there's a maximum stint time of 65 minutes. And that 65 minutes is from crossing the, either the start line if you're the first driver, or from leaving the pit lane when you take over to coming back in. Good job. That was pretty exciting spinning on the wall. I saw it on the onboard and I got a half yeah, time. <laughs> like, oh yeah, okay. So P3 is 20 seconds. Okay, 19. <laughs> 19 seconds. Yeah, but very early stage to say now. It's good that we are within the 30 seconds, it's good. Now we have to wait until the safety car picks the leader, which is the us. Because he needs to go around, right? Yes. It'll take a while. They take him out of the car. The area is clean, but they take the driver out of the car. So we risk another lap. Yeah, yeah. No, no, until, 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 until right. driving time, we risk until the last lap. Because we must be not the leader. The safety car did the team no favours at all because it had just been lapped by the overall race leader. Then there was an incident, the race director went to what's called a full course yellow, everybody slows down immediately and you have to hold station. But then, ready for the restart of the race to pick up the pace, the safety car is used. That can go faster than the cars are allowed to go under a full course yellow. So it's a safety thing, it gets the tyres up to temperature, gets the pressures back up, it's a safer restart. But the trouble is, that you restart in that order. So once the car had lost its lap, it had no opportunity to get it back. And therefore for the restart, it was a lap adrift of all of the opposition. To unlap itself, it would have to pass the overall race leader. But more crucially, everybody else in the class had already been able to gain that lap by rejoining the back of the crocodile of cars. So there was the problem of having to somehow find the speed to overtake the race leader and unlap yourself. And then 
do a full lap to try and catch up everybody else. And with the balance of performance, meaning the cars were so evenly matched, that was never going to happen. the safety car I thought it would have been worse <laughs> so it's the timing with the, with, the, with the safety car when we lost that lap because of safety car I thought it would have been worse the result so P6 is still some points for I would say three seconds we wouldn't get got uh, that, that that safety car three four seconds yeah because it just it passed you and then after it was left there two three seconds in front of you boom but there is, of course, if, 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 but this is like an unlike, unlike event, for sure. Coincidence, I don't know what to say, but yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck. <laughs> the wrong timing, heck, that's the wrong timing. <laughs> Let's see his mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>